uh, okay, awaken uh, awaken uh, to the uh, truth and understand the uh, principles. Let's look at the initial verse. Of phenomena are like dreams, are like jewel bubbles or shadows. Uh, the mind is intrinsically tranquil, as always had the nature and happiness. So, the phenomena are like dreams, due or bubbles or shadows. Well, in other words, this so called dreams, they are all in our mind. But then our mind is intrinsically tranquil. The word keyword is intrinsic. And um, that's the underlying uh, nature of. The mind, right? The true nature of the mind uh, had the nature of emptiness. So this is paradoxical, isn't it? Uh, if it's emptiness, how can it be dreams? So therefore, the phenomena of dreams that is because the deluded view of existence once sees flourishing and decay, uh, we have the arising of passion causes of bonds of suffering. So in this dream, one acts and faces consequences. What is the harm or benefit awaken the truth and understand the principle of psycho phenomena? So, in other words, once the mind is intrinsically tranquil and has always had the nature of emptiness, uh, that's because we are deluded in a way. How then, then this delusion comes about? This delusion comes about from the layers of uh, defilements where pile up. That's the reason why, when this deluded, when the mind is obscured, that's why we had these dreams like dew bubbles or shadows. But the interesting nature is, is actually its emptiness. So in other words, so yesterday, as I said, if one were to look outside the window and the curtain is drawn down, um, and that's the encrustation in, uh, right in, or the obscuration in front of us to see what's outside. So the only thing we can do then with this obscuration, the mind, imagines and that's why skandhas uh, form and that's why we had these dreams or, or juice bubbles or shadows. So the master's explanation, humans are all interested in have the nature of true suchness and because we're covered by defilements that was shown earlier. So these defilements that have covered us and obscure us uh, given rise to, we can, because we are not enlightened, we, because we are not enlightened, therefore we do not know what is the truth, we do what we think is right. Okay, so that has a result of which, when we keep doing what we think is right, over time, the repeated actions that we do, the repeated thoughts that we have, becomes a habit. So the habit over time becomes our character. So this is what these habitual tendencies uh, that come about. So the mind is intrinsically tranquil and has a nature of true suchness. So we cannot let the five scandals from feeling, perception, uh, action, consciousness, influence of the life without us being aware of them. So the key word here is aware, it's about awareness. And that's the reason why I quite often I mentioned to you that in our practice, our practice is to grow from the worldly consciousness or the mundane consciousness to the spiritual consciousness. And there are two parts of the spiritual consciousness that we should have. One is the consciousness of awareness and the other one is consciousness of mindfulness. So this awareness is about your inner self. So this inner self that you have, that what you see in the form, uh, remember last a few, a uh, few days ago, spoke about the 18 realms, right? We got the six roots, the six dust, and the six consciousnesses arising from there, or the recognition of the six consciousnesses, and mixed up with the skandha, the form, feeling, perception, um, our action, and consciousness. So therefore, we must be aware of our inner being, uh, so that if we are in stillness, we cannot, we have the six roots, we got then the six dust, right? But so long as our consciousness rise above those six consciousness, and because we're going to be elevated above those six consciousness, then we will not stir up 
it applies skandhas. So we see the form as it is, the feeling as it is, the perception as it is. So that's why the conscious goes from, from as is to a small is, to as is, which is the big is, which is so the spiritual consciousness that we see this thing. So therefore, arising from that, the feeling that, um, that we recognize is we are in practice, we are mindful of the feeling that if we are one of the four of mindfulness, feeling is actually suffering. So we recognize that. And we'll go, we'll go to, the, to go to the fear and the fearlessness of suffering later. Then the perception would not arise when we have the four right efforts, right? Uh, to generate the wholesomeness. So we must be virtually to quickly eliminate our delusions and ignorance and quickly guard against the wrongdoings. So how do we then quickly eliminate our delusion? So much that you understand the Dharma and much that we can um, discern from what the, from the teachings, the, but the, in the practice, we must have that consciousness so that we can practice inside out and outside in. So in this illusory world, we are not mindful and up following illusory phenomena because but we see, because we can feel, we can touch, right? We can see. So because of this, we can see, we can hear, all these things are real. But in truth, because of the 18 realms, it's actually illusory. So what we uh, feel, what we touch, what we hear, are they indeed the truth? Or is it an illusion? And if you, and, and the world is happening right now, isn't that an illusion? You look at the way things of business are being done today. What is advertisement about? Advertisement is to entice your mind, is entice your senses. So therefore, when we see the advertisement, so that advertisement really, it's, if you put it, um, to the intrinsic explanation is actually a, is, is a creation, it's a dream, it's an illusion. And that's why, that's why we are enticed to buy things. So same thing when we try to, in the worldly ways, uh, we try to um, sell things to other people. Are we exaggerating what we are selling? And that's why monastics take very strict precepts and do not live this worldly life. The need of live a monastic life. But we are householders. So because we're householders, we are treading on this edge. Um, and therefore, it's more so we need to be aware of them. So all phenomena are like dreams or like little bubbles or shadows. And when the bubbles form, what happens? The bubble that's actually, that's, in essence, the bubbles or when they form foam, that practically they're all empty. And this is the delusion that we are living in. So I remember I shared with you a contemplation some time ago about this. And uh, so when I listened to Master about this, so I, I brought back that contemplation that I shared with you on the 7th of December and here it is. And I thought this resonated so well with this, uh, what I've just mentioned earlier. This on the 7th of December, the aggregates are in the absence of self and are so are the phenomena. And this is, this is what, in essence, what the truth is. There's no self to it. But we don't self, there is no permanence in the phenomena of aggregates. So, and that is about um, the mindfulness, right? The form for mindfulness. For form appears as a mass of form. Feeling is like a bubble in the water. Perception is a mere mirage. Mental formation, is an imaginary scene and consciousness is like a magical illusion. They don't, they're not real. So all these are devoid of material form of the four elements are in the essence emptiness. So the water is an element, but the bubble inside there, that's the form element doesn't mean it exists. So therefore, um, uh, it rest, I thought if this resonated well with what uh, teaching to do, that's the reason why I brought this up. So what we need to do is that we need to beware 
who they need to be aware when our practice. We need to be aware of our own self. And um, and Master mentioned uh, to say they would um, this line that saying they would make loud noise, loud and awful noises. Though what we say is incorrect, we keep talking, thinking that the way we practice is correct. I mean, have you come across people to emphasize a point to speak louder? Um, but and sometimes you don't they don't not, not what it is saying is not quite right. I mean, you can see that even to some of the world leaders today, uh, and, this, and unfortunately, and this is what they do. So they, they create a lot of noises. And I still remember, um, and there's a, uh, uh, and it all started from who? Started from the time of Hitler during the Second World War. And his so called PR consultant at that time, I say that a, a lie told often enough becomes the truth. And that's the reason why, for us, there's so much deception in this world today. Uh, we need to be very mindful. Of what we listen to, so we keep. Um, so what happened is that there's the some who thinks they know. I when you walk the path, you find across some of these uh, people, even in the Dharma. Um, they keep teaching others and keep talking about how wonderful the Dharma is. We keep sharing loudly with others, but have not taken the Dharma to heart. And there, there, there are um, some who who does this. So they're like goals with truths like needles. They make loud noises. They cannot take the Dharma to heart. And just like hungry goats, the Samas are big, but the truths are as thin as needles. The, uh, so if you, I'm not sure whether you understand how hungry goats uh, uh, looks like, but that's what it is, a big stomach. And uh, that looks like as thin as needles. And when they are being fed, they turn into ashes. Then there's some guards in the house had heads. Uh, like oxen or horses, this Chinese ngau tau ma min. So they are jealous the burdens of king of hell um, and their powerful and knowledge the affliction of extreme views. So the affliction, uh, the extreme views that ox have two horns referring to extreme views. And um, this is because and the king to saying having the inflated view of the self. And the Buddha Dharma is the middle way, and there are no two extreme views about this. So all this um, that we got to be uh, mindful of uh, in our practice, and um, obviously there's uh, the fear, obviously of the hell realm. But you see, if we fear the misery of suffering, we fear the misery of hell. Therefore, we then must have may have this understanding and because of this fear and that's that's where from the fear you have to grow to have faith in the triple gem faith in the buddha faith in the dharma and faith in the sangha so the fear to the faith that we have and so in our practice when we understand more and walk the path and master some time already been saying sharing that in this particular path that we take, we do not fall in the three lower realms. So if we understand that we are in practice, that fear should dissolve, dissolve into fearlessness. Fearlessness, why? Because that you will not fall in the lower realms. And that's what Dharma is about, right? So therefore, if you just, Master said, if you just keep the five precepts, you will not fall into the lower realm. But if you, undertake that ten wholesome deeds, your rebirth in the heavenly realm, but still you must understand they're still within the samsara. So the lessons learned, people with deviant thinking and view are only focused on the three periods, the past, the present, and the future. So many people ask, oh, was I in my past? What will happen to me in the future? I want to ask this person about my causes and effects at brief periods of time. And master said, is this the right thing to do? So we have this obscuration in us. There obviously have you, I mean, I'm sure you, you will come across with people who can see their past, but they are yet to be enlightened. And that's the reason why even they do they have practice well, they can see the path, but there's still obscuration in there. We do not need, Master Damon said, do not need to know what happened in the past, but we must be, 
believe that since the beginningless time, we have been influenced by our habitual tendencies. And what we really need to understand is the law of karma. And that's what matters. So we understand the law of karma that in this lifetime, in this moment in time, in this particular life that we have. So you don't really need to see the past because the present will tell you what your past is. Your present will tell you what your future will be. And this is all in the law of karma. And this is what matters most. So this, um, obviously, when we um, see in the clairvoyant who can read what the future is, but the future is what you're destined, what you're destined to be if you do not, um, if you accept what it is and you live life as in a normal way. And Leo Fan already have this um, in the teaching that even despite that this lesson has been told, that he practices and, and, and cultivate the path with goodness. And that destiny is in your hands. And that's the difference between a fate and destiny uh, of the Dharma. Because we have unenlightened minds, ordinary people, with our unenlightened cleverness, we cause more suffering in this world. So it is stream, and that's all because uh, we think we are right, because we're clever. But clever ones, uh, most of them are not enlightened. And that's because of the ego that we have. So we should awaken to the truth and understand the principles of a cycle of phenomena, which is the truth in the Dharma. So in contemplation, an unknowing one does not fear the danger because of ignorance. I mean, it's like a child, isn't it? And it doesn't know what the danger is to touch the eye and it burns the finger. But a knowing one is fearless of the condition because one realizes the unconditioned phenomena. When one realizes the conditioned phenomena, uh, it would understand that the realization of that phenomena is emptiness. And it is the reason why it's fearless. So unknowing one does not fear, and an unknowing one does not fear out of ignorance, but a knowing one is fearless out of wisdom. So the former leaves the unconditioned life, the latter is, the, is in the unconditioned practice. So one is ignorant, the other is wise. The same thing that goes to fear. Obviously, we all start with fear, we fear of hell, we fear of misery or suffering. But this is from there that we grow to understand what the truth is. So that's the reason why without darkness, we cannot understand light. So on relationship, when one's mind is shrouded by the veil of obscuration, which I just give a metaphor of the curtain being drawn up and looking outside the window, one cannot see the light of truth, but only what is before the eyes and hear what is sound, sounded to the ears by others. That's why we've got to be very mindful and be aware of our inner self so that we do not fall in those trappings of the treacherous slope. Okay, God and brothers and sisters, thank you. Yeah, God and thank you so much. Uh, Brother Chin for another round of uh, marvelous uh, sharing and uh, marvelous insight. Uh, 